get ready to dig in because today on Made in Virginia, we're taking Catoctin Greenstone from this quarry located in Shadwell, Virginia, which is just four miles east of Charlottesville and turning it into the world's finest and most sought after tennis courts. It's called Basalt, it's green, it's pure Virginian, it's shipped the world over, and it's being served up right here on Made in Virginia. Made in Virginia is brought to you by At Union Bank and Trust, we salute the dreamers, the thinkers, the doers, the believers, the builders, and the makers. Thanks to your vision, hard work, and innovation, you make Virginia shine. Union Bank and Trust, a partner of Virginia business and a proud supporter of Made in Virginia and Virginia Public Broadcasting. T Mike, honoring Virginia's manufacturing heritage and proudly supporting Made in Virginia. T Mike, we drive industry. And a very special thanks to Made in Virginia supporters. The Woodrow Wilson Presidential Library and Museum in Stanton, Virginia. A truly unique Made in Virginia experience. The Greater Augusta Regional Chamber of Commerce, a partner for success. And the Law Offices of Allen and Carwile. The Virginia Greenstone used in the making of the world's finest clay tennis courts comes from ancient lava flows, part of a geologic unit known as the Catoctin Formation. The Catoctin Formation underlies much of the Blue Ridge with a vast surface exposure at the Luckstone Quarry in Shadwell, Virginia. The word Catoctin is rooted in the old Algonquin. The exact meaning has become a point of contention. Among historians, the translation speckled mountain is preferred. However, local tradition holds that Catoctin means place of many deer. Regardless of the debate surrounding the origins of the term Catoctin, there is no debate that the angular structure of this Virginia greenstone, when crushed and compounded by Hartrue in nearby Troy, Virginia, makes the world's best clay tennis court surface. The stone itself is, is a, it's a metabasalt. It's a volcanic stone that billions of years ago uh, was heated and then cooled rapidly and compressed all at the same time. And so this created a very dense, a very hard stone. And one of the things you need for a good tennis court surface is you need a product that will blend together into a stable, smooth, platform that you can play on. And the great thing about this stone is that when you crush it, it stays very angular. And those angles mesh together when it's graded out and you add some water, they mesh together to form this beautiful flat surface that not only is flat on top, but it has just a little loose granule top dressing which people can pivot on, slide on, and it, it's really the perfect kind of surface for, the com for a comfortable game and for a game that really challenges a player's skills and tactics. The other thing about the stone is a lot of people don't realize that it's a naturally green stone. So if you actually take a, a piece of the stone, you look at it under a microscope and you shine a light behind it, you'll see that it's green. It, you'll see green coming through on the stone. And the benefit of that is that you couldn't just use any color stone because it affects the visibility of the game. So the fact that this was a nice dark color that contrasted against the white balls back in the day and the yellow balls today have made it just about, just about the perfect surface. To illustrate just how sought after this pure Virginia product is, during the height of the season, typically from February to May, over 640 tons are transported daily to the Hartrue plant. 
It originally came into being because there was a, a gentleman who was selling courts who was fascinated by uh, some particular uh, stone that was being used as roofing granules in Hagerstown, Maryland. And he thought that those that, that stone would make a great tennis court, that you could grate it out and blend it and turn it into a very good tennis court. That was very important at the time because much of clay court tennis was played on real clays, clays that they would dig out of the ground, that they would flatten out, smooth over, cover with some brick dust. That's how clay court tennis was played. So the problem was that uh, there were not a lot of good clay deposits situated all across the country. You could find good clay deposits in the Northeast, you could find them in, in uh, various geographies, but if you've ever seen the Virginia red clay, it's either hard as a rock and brittle, or it's total mush. And that's what a lot of the South is like until you get to, you know, until you get more towards the, uh, to the coast where soils become very sandy. So this product solved the problem, which was it was uniform, consistent, and readily available. Now, the vein of stone runs all the way through the state of Virginia, but most of it is untappable. So most of it is underground, has to be tunneled to. Some of it's in uh, national forest land. So uh, what happened was an engineer who was working for the company in Hagerstown drove through Charlottesville, and at night he noticed that the roads had a green tint. And he got very curious about the stone and where that was coming from, and that led him to the, the Shadwell Quarry, which is owned by Lux Stone at the time. And he found that it was the same stone, uh, the same basic uh, geology, and he chose to come here and start a company on his own, which was selling the same types of material, uh, but from a local source. So that's really how this product ended up in Virginia. It was in Maryland originally when it was harvested for the original Hartrue Corporation, but over time it made its way here. And the company at that point in time was called Lee Tennis. Lee Tennis actually bought Hartrue in 1998, bought the name uh, and uh, the customer list, and Hartrue became part of this company. So the history of Hartrue goes back to 1932 as far as a brand goes, but the history of the product, it was always here. It was a matter of a local engineer identifying it and going after it. The beauty of this product is that it's actually more forgiving on the court than asphalt or, or any other surface. Um, it's, it's softer, it has, it has a slide to it, and it's more forgiving on the joint. So when you step, your, plant your foot on asphalt, it stays there. With the clay, the clay has a tendency to want to slide, so that allows you to play longer. I mean, really with the clay court game, you got to build the point, right? It's not, it's not a big serve and a volley. I mean, you got to set up the point. You got to build it. Uh, six, seven, eight shots. Uh, it, it, it's, it's a great surface to develop, not only kids, but for you and I. You know, we call it the neutralizer. Right? It slows down the ball a little bit. You're able to chase down more balls. It makes it a more enjoyable game. The big difference for us is, is really about comfort. So our surface typically is uh, a minimum of 10 degrees cooler in the summertime. Uh, it allows you to pivot, move, and slide versus the jarring s starts and stops that you get on a hard surface. And that combination of factors allows players to play more hours a day, more days a week, without overstressing their joints, especially uh, back and lower extremities. So th th that's the biggest difference for us. I would also say that from a playing perspective, as a guy who was a player and a coach, um, these types of surfaces, they really require you, they're slower surfaces. So they require you to develop a point. You can't just hit a hard shot and expect a winner like you can on fast, hardcore surfaces. With this type of a surface, you have to have a, a pretty wide repertoire of shots, a variety of spins, and the ability to think your way through a point. And to me, it's a total gift. I, I know there are some people who love a fast, hard point and the, the hard serve that's a winner, but the reality is there's nothing as rewarding as having to mentally and physically, tactically work your way through a point and figure out how to beat somebody who's equal or sometimes even better than you. Hartrue has earned a well-respected reputation in the world of tennis, not only because of its state-of-the-art clay court surfaces, but also with its offering of over 200 tennis-related products, ranging from nets to training gear to court seating and court maintenance. 
so it should be no surprise that one of the biggest names in tennis is right here in Virginia. We manufacture everything to maintain a clay court. Um, some of our products actually can jump into other areas, um, like our lutes that we use can be used at golf courses. They can be used on infields of, of softball fields. Um, we also provide rollers that you take care of your court, you can compact it. Um, we do drag brushes, which helps maintain your courts. Uh, we sell windscreen. This is pretty much a one-stop shop here. You know, anything that you need is related to tennis. We actually can, we, we sell nets. Um, we actually do private label nets. If you wanted to send in your logo and make nets, we can do that also. To see what really goes into making the world's best court, we need to go back to the Shadwell Quarry and consider the 500 million year old metabasalt lava that metamorphosed with the minerals chlorite, actinolite, and epidote, giving the rock we call Virginia Greenstone its unique color. Shooting or blasting is the first step in what totals about 16 hours of processing at the quarry. The shot rock is then dug out into roughly two foot square pieces. These large rocks are first run through a gyratory crusher, which on this first pass yields some of the dust which will become tennis court material, but mostly the yield is size 7 or gabion size rip-rap rocks. The size 7 rocks are run through a second crusher, yielding smaller rocks that are screened down to a 1 inch diameter. With each crushing and sifting, some of the precious green dust is created, but it is on the final run through a tertiary crusher where the one-inch rocks are made into the Virginia greenstone dust that will sift through a 7mm screen. This is the elemental rock dust that is transported daily to Hartrue to make clay tennis court surfaces. Each day, Dozens of trucks carrying roughly 16 and a half tons of Virginia Greenstone dust on a single load make their 10-mile trek to Hartrue. At Hartrue, the Virginia Greenstone is offloaded into dome storage buildings. It is important to store the Greenstone dust under cover so as to keep the moisture content low. This allows the dust to pass more readily through the hard true processing, which includes additional crushing, sifting, compounding, or mixing the elemental greenstone into the hard true green clay tennis court material, or as they call it here, TCM. We're getting good, uh, good material, and that material is nice and dry. It'll go through relatively quickly. Um, but when it starts to build with moisture, then it may recycle quite a bit through the, through the process. Um, it, it's hard to put a number on the amount of times that our product goes through our roll crusher before it's screened out. Um, but typically we're, we're thinking one or two passes and that product gets through our screens. From the storage dome, the greenstone dust is sent through a tunnel via a conveyor where it is run through its first screening. A size 12 mesh is used, which is roughly the size of a typical window screen. The dust that sifts through the size 12 mesh goes into a secondary storage unit and is ready to be mixed and become hard true green clay. The greenstone that does not make it through the first pass is sent through a roll crusher and sifted again through the size 12 mesh screen. The screened and sifted product is also sent to the secondary storage. The greenstone that does not initially sift through the number 12 mesh screen is crushed again and the process is repeated until the majority of the greenstone is right sized and ready to be mixed. From the secondary storage, the greenstone is sent on a conveyor belt where an inline belt scale measures the weight and calculates the right amount of gypsum that should be compounded or mixed into the tennis court material. Likewise, the gypsum is transported from holding tanks and run through a flow meter. This meter controls the flow of gypsum and is based on the initial measurements from the belt scale. The soon-to-be Virginia-made tennis court material and the gypsum are transported via conveyors to the mixing screw, where they are blended together. The entire operation 
Crushing, screening, and mixing is automated and electronically controlled because when the tennis world is relying on you to make the best playing surfaces, your blend must be correct and consistent. Once blended, the Hartrue Green Clay Tennis Court material is sent via a bucket elevator to the bagging bin tank. From there, the TCM is sifted once more for quality control, this time through a larger number 7 mesh, assuring any larger pieces or chunks of compounded TCM do not make their way into the Hartrue package. The Hartrue Green Clay is then bagged and made ready to ship. Completely automated, the bags are filled, sealed, and palletized, ready for shipment. Hartrue Green Clay comes in various sized packages, including 50 and 80 pound bags, and three sizes of super sacks, one ton, one and a quarter tons, and 1.4 tons of the world's best made in Virginia clay tennis court material. Hartrue's value to the tennis world doesn't end with the shipment of their surface materials. The company provides a full line of tennis court consulting services, from hard court conversions and renovations to new construction, maintenance, and irrigation system design. And this Virginia-based company is making sure it maintains its place as a world leader, with game-changing innovations like the development of its hydro court system. HydroCourt is a unique subsurface irrigation system which creates an artificial water table beneath a hard true tennis court. As tennis evolves, of course, you, have, uh, you start to develop not only equipment accessories that help different facilities you know, manage their courts more effectively and uh, give players a better playing experience, but we found that we also needed to add some different surface and irrigation types. And, uh, and so we began uh, pioneering an underground surface in the late 1980s and uh, that we now offer as hydrocourt and essentially it took the old way of watering a court which is with sprinklers and from above casting water on top of the court and letting it soak in to actually inserting water under a court and allowing it to wick its way to the top and evaporate naturally. Nice thing about that latter method is that the court stays uniformly moist all the time and you don't ever have to shut it down like you would if you were going to run sprinklers. So the biggest thing when you think about playing tennis is at 9 o'clock in the morning, think about clay courts, 9 o'clock in the morning is really when the, when the first match happens. Yeah, take a, a local country club, 9 o'clock in the morning, your first match happens. And then what happens, if you're just watering it by hand or with a sprinkler system, throughout the course of the day, you, can't, you just can't get enough water on that surface to keep it in a consistent playing condition. So at nine o'clock, with all that water in it, it's probably gonna play a little slower. And then by two o'clock, as it starts to dry out, it's probably gonna play a little faster and you'll be a little more dustier. With the hydro court system, what's gonna happen is you're gonna have ideal playing conditions 24 hours a day. So when you build one of these courts, uh, you basically, hard true is the top one inch of the tennis court surface. And that's what we manufacture. Everything else is a stone base that serves as a reservoir for the irrigation system. So we build the stone base first, we install the irrigation system underneath it with the hydrocord system. We build a stone base on top of that. And then we have one inch of hard true, which is 40 tons of material on top of that. And that gets watered in, compacted. From that point, we actually put down the line tapes on the court surface, put up your net posts in your net, and you're ready to play. By controlling the level of this water table, optimum moisture in the court surface can be maintained. The Hard True Hydro Court is constructed with six water retaining cells, each approximately 20 feet by 60 feet. These cells are constructed using a high density polyethylene liner. They can be independently controlled to allow for optimum moisture control in shady areas and areas of heavy play, such as behind the baseline. People are always astounded at, at, at the fact that we take this stone and we ship it over to China, for instance, or we ship it over to the, to the UK. Uh, because it's a very heavy product, and as you know, China's shipping a lot of stuff to us, so the fact that we can take a stone, which is a very heavy product, and ship it over there, um, it tells you how unique and valuable this raw material is in the state of Virginia, because it is used in places like China, Saudi Arabia, Middle East, UK, it's really Australia, it's used all over the world.
Man, sometimes you have to pinch yourself. You know, I'll tell my wife, yeah, obviously there's a lot of travel involved with the position. Uh, I'll tell my wife, I'm going to China. I'll spend two weeks in China. And then you get over there and you see your surface that's being made here in, you know, Troy, Virginia. And, and you just got to pinch yourself and you're saying, my God, our product, you know, tennis has brought me to China, right? I, I just got back from a two week trip to Europe and you, you, all around Europe, you see your product in Europe and it's just amazing, you know, where our product is at. If, 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 if I didn't experience it, I wouldn't believe it if you told me we were in, in 40 different countries. I have a personal and intense love for tennis that I've had my whole life and, uh, and that's infused in me. And so to be able to work in the industry you love obviously means a lot for anybody. What I love in particular about this company and, uh, and the products that we're able to manufacture here in Virginia is how intimately we're acquainted with the most historic moments in the game of tennis. So the US Open was played for three years on Hard True up at Westside Tennis Club in New York. Uh, Chris Everett won it all three years, an American. Uh, Jimmy Connors won it one of the years, lost in the finals another year, another American. So, to me, what I treasure is, is is that whole connection to the game, to making the playing experience better uh, because of our surface, because of our equipment and accessories. Uh, I treasure that. Well, not only to do business, but Virginia is a great place to live. As I mentioned earlier, as, as much as we travel, I love seeing different places, but there is no better place to live and work than, than Virginia. First of all, the central location of Virginia on the East Coast, it has a huge amount to do with our success as a company. Because we're equal distance to Florida, which is our biggest market, and New England, which is our second biggest market. So the fact that there, uh, there's great transportation here, there's ample uh, roadways, uh, there's train if we need to go across country, there's seaports if we need to ship overseas, that's a huge amount of the success uh, for us, is the logistics provided and the ease of transportation. Uh, as far as doing business, we, we have a great team of associates here. Um, our experience working here in the state is that, um, is that you have a hardworking labor force that is, is less transient. I think people who are from Virginia tend to stay in Virginia. And so we're able to attract great workers who stay with the company for a long period of time. So also from a labor perspective, we really enjoy that. And then it's, a, it's an easy place to do business. So I would say it's a, a business-friendly state. E economically, they understand that it's, it's, hard, it's hard for companies to make a go of it, and they do the best to make it as easy for companies as they can to, to operate efficiently. I'd say the associates are really what makes the company great. Uh, you know, we have a, a, a lot of tenure here. Uh, one of my sales reps, Harriet Lambert, she's been with us for 43 years. Uh, we have multiple people here that have been with us 35 plus years. It's just amazing the commitment that the associates have given the company through the years. Uh, and this area in itself, Troy, is just, again, most of the people live within five to ten mile radius from here, and they're just, they're extremely committed to the business. Uh, for, for them, I mean, if you'd say, hey, what's the success, the key to success for Hard True? I'd say the associates. There's a, a huge amount of pride. Uh, I can't tell you the number of people that I see uh, wearing a shirt like this as I travel. Uh, flying back today, in fact, flying back into town, somebody saw me on the plane and they said, are you Hartru? And I said, yeah, yeah, we're, we're Hartru. She said, oh, where are you guys located? I said, we're, we're in Virginia. And we, of course, were flying back into Charlottesville and she was amazed. And uh, time and time again, we run into people who just don't recognize that uh, they've seen the courts all over the country, sometimes all over the world, and they don't recognize the fact that this company is based in Charlottesville, Virginia. I think the fact that we can do so much here for the game of tennis, that we have so much influence over the game of tennis, uh, uh, it gives a lot of credit to the state of Virginia and the resources that the state has uh, and its contributions to the sport. Why do we call zero or no points in tennis love, such as calling out love 15 before one serves? Is it A, when you have no points, you must still be on the court only because of your love for the game? Is it B, because one loves to beat their opponent? Is it C, French origins derived from Leuf, which means egg is in the shape of a zero? Or D, the game was originally a courting ritual and participants could call out love to signify their romantic interests? 
We'll serve up the answer right after this. So stay tuned for more of Made in Virginia. Made in Virginia is brought to you by At Union Bank and Trust, we salute the dreamers, the thinkers, the doers, the believers, the builders, and the makers. Thanks to your vision, hard work, and innovation, you make Virginia shine. Union Bank and Trust, a partner of Virginia business and a proud supporter of Made in Virginia and Virginia Public Broadcasting. T Mike. Honoring Virginia's manufacturing heritage and proudly supporting Made in Virginia. T Mike, we drive industry. And a very special thanks to Made in Virginia supporters the Woodrow Wilson Presidential Library and Museum in Stanton, Virginia. A truly unique Made in Virginia experience. The Greater Augusta Regional Chamber of Commerce, a partner for success. And the Law Offices of Allen and Carwile. So, why do we call no points in tennis love? The answer is A. The one theory claims the term is a corruption of the French loaf, the egg, to describe the shape of the number zero. The Oxford English Dictionary suggests that love really does mean love. The only thing keeping a scoreless player on the court is the love of the game. Next time on Made in Virginia, we travel to Richlands, Virginia, located in Taswell County, to see just how the world's best and most powerful crawler cranes are built to overcome the challenge of lifting and moving over 130 tons. These cranes can extend their jibs out to a height of 296 feet, Come and experience a vertical challenge like no other next time on Made in Virginia. If you would like to learn more about today's episode or suggest a Virginia manufacturer for the program, you may visit us at madeinvirginia.tv and at wvpt.net.